morning everybody. Uh, first, uh, uh, we just apologize for the switching of the lecture. Professor Ekma was here, Morikan was here, because he came directly from the airport and he was tired. So he was advised by Fatma to go back to the hotel and rest and then we switch uh, the, the, the presentation. So I hope you will spend the uh, useful and fruitful uh, week with uh, cross cytometry and you will learn uh, a lot about it. You cannot learn, of course, everything. It has been since many years, uh, cross cytometry, with uh, many, many applications. But uh, it's always good to get the basic and, and the useful applications that will be relevant to all of you. Uh, so we will start by uh, Mrs. Hala Bakhir to give her uh, first talk and then we will have a short break and we will allow Professor Volker to come and rest a little bit after this uh, terrible night he had. Uh, Hala will talk about uh, the uh, uses of flow cytometry in assessing the immune functions. And uh, Hala, I don't want to say she has many years. If a, a man, you can say many years. But a woman, if you say many years, that means she's old. <laughs> <laughs> so, She's expert without specifying the number of years in cytometry, and she she was graduated in the University of Khartoum with honor or high honor, and uh, then she did also with high honor her master in McGill University in Canada, and then she joined us and established the cytometry laboratory, uh, helping us and the PhD students. A lot, and I hope she will convey her knowledge. And uh, I just present Hala. I will leave you a little bit because uh, I have other commitments, students, and some clinics. But I will try to welcome Professor Walker when he comes here. I myself worked with sports psychometry before you were born, all of you, <laughs> for many years. In, uh, in Sweden, but now I forgot. I was doing the cell sorting and assessing all the CDs, the markers, and the intracellular pathways. Uh, we had a lot of fun with the cross activity. Uh, but I hope you will have the same fun. And good luck, please. Have a carry on. Uh, excuse me if you wish me things I can do. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming and uh, I'm going to uh, speak about uh, the relationship or how you can use flow cytometry as a technique to analyze uh, new function uh, analysis or responses. Well, before I'm going into that, I would like to uh, talk a little bit about uh, the flow cytometry of the machines that we have here at the job RSA. Uh, because based on what we have, you will be, if you know uh, its parameter, uh, the parameters available or, or uh, the restricted, uh, or what color you may uh, need to order to, to use in your experiment. Uh, so it could be detected by this machine. It's better just to give you an idea about what we have here at the APC. So it's fast caliber uh, from a BD and it has two lasers, argon and red diode. Uh, it can detect up to four parameters. That means you can, when you're designing your experiment, you will need to use only up to four different uh, flow fluorochrome dyes. Uh, in addition to the fluorescent dye, you can have the uh, information are indicating the size and granulity, and that will have it from the size scatter forward scatter first block, does not need to stay. So, six parameters you can uh, detect is uh, 
four fluorescent and uh, two from the uh, side scatter and four scatter. The main software we use is Cell Quest Pro, and you can use it for cell acquisition and analysis. However, there is other uh, software only for a specific experiments. Say, for example, the DNA experiment or CBA, where you will ne uh, mainly need it for st uh, uh, statistic analysis or uh, for a specific test. Uh, the fax tube you will need is round, uh, uh, round, uh, color, uh, round shape in the bottom, and its size is 4 times 75 millimeter. Uh, for quality control, we use fax uh, comp software uh, using uh, BD Calibrate Beats, which will give us the uh, alignment uh, laser and sensitivity specificity, and it aligns all of the mirrors and the detectors that the machine, in terms of quality control, is perfect. Uh, the other thing about the layout of the machine is the FL. One, and here is the possibility of stain you can use. Alexa for this is the main used here where we can, as I explained before, the bit we use, you can, you, uh, you can use it already. Otherwise, if you say, for example, added others, you may need to buy another bit for uh, calibration for the machine. So you can design, say, exp you explain with Alexa uh, for 88 and 50 in FL1, uh, FL2, say for example, PE and PI, say for example, is it for DNA staining or PE as a form from that. For FL3, you can use APC mainly, and uh, for FL3, you can use uh, 7AAD or you can use PI or you can use B, uh, per CB. And uh, here, this is the two lasers, and this is the four scatter. Uh, mainly with uh, corresponding to the size of the cell and that size scatter is mainly uh, you can differentiate uh, uh, according to the complexity of the cell. So when with these two parameters, say if you have uh, blood cells, you will be able to uh, get a uh, lymphocyte, monocyte and granulocyte. Uh, in your experiment, before designing, it is important to have scientific knowledge about what you want to do. And also protocol design and time frame. Because in time frame, flow cytometry, say for example, you are studying signal transduction pathway project. Uh, it's very important, it's critical when you, you activate yourself between time of activation or say receiving a cell from a patient, you want to check phosphorylation of a specific protein. Uh, it's very important within, say, 30 minutes to fix those cells. That if it's, say, for example, in a patient. Other, otherwise, you will have uh, false negative or you have some uh, false positive result. So, uh, if you activate at the time of each activity, exactly has to be fixed. And it's better to have always a fresh sample if you are studying uh, protein uh, phosphorylation. Uh, for controls, don't forget your isotype controls or I stand as negative control. You can also add positive control cells if you if you are uh, as, as positive or say for example you have uh, you want to compare wild type and you want to compare knockout mice cell. So here you will have the I stand as a negative one or isotype as a negative, but you, in your test if you use the wild type test cells is the test, that means you will be comparing it with the wild type uh, uh, cells in that matter. So added control is, uh, is impor important when you design your experiment. For samples, uh, usually it, it, the cells goes uh, in, uh, in the stream of line, single cells, that means each cell will be analyzed. So if you have tissue, it's important to uh, loosen those cells, uh, get, the cell, get them into a cell suspension. So either you trypsonize uh, or digest them to get single cell um, uh, analysis in a cell, usual cell suspension. 
You can use fixed cells or you can use alive cells, for example, or frozen cells, uh, and then you use the resolving. For fixed cells, uh, you have to be aware, as I said before, of your knowledge about what you want to do. If you want to check viability, say for example, cell count, you cannot use fixed cell. You need to use a live cell. Other than that, when you uh, stain with the PI dye, you will have all of the cells are being dead, like staying dead, because they are already fixed fixation to the cell. So, uh, this if you are analyzing a whole cell. If you are analyzing protein, you can uh, say, for example, take them intracellular or secreted, for example, in cytokines. You can check proteins for, say, for example, phenotyping or as an indicator of activation or differentiation. You can also uh, check for proteins for proteinic secretion. Say, there is some uh, receptors usually uh, in a low level expression, but if you activate, with specific activated, you may have an increased expression of the uh, receptor. So it could be an indication of, uh, of receptor expression uh, following activation. Also, you can check phosphorylation uh, of proteins, and it could be, uh, you can study signal transduction with it in the cell surface of the cell receptor, or inside the cell, or even inside the nucleus. It could be tracked. So in each in each uh, technique, you need to know uh, what do you want to do first. Then you design experiment accordingly. You can uh, follow what uh, what uh, what's the possibility you can uh, obtain. Also, you may uh, study DNA. It could be done for say, for example, in cancer, in apoptosis, cytotoxicity, cell cycle analysis. And with this, you have to be careful with what kind of uh, um, fixation you're going to use. For example, what kind of dye, also the parameter available in the machine. Uh, when you're studying DNA, also the possibility of the software that is uh, there uh, to later say, calculate the DI of the DNA if you are needed, according to your experiment, if you are interested on that. Uh, staining. When you are staining, there is say, for example, direct staining when you have the chloroform right away attached to the antibody, or indirect, uh, you can also do surface stain, which is for all of the receptors, or intracellular stain inside the cell, or DNA stain. Uh, now I will go to our main topic, which is the immune function. To understand immune function, we maybe need to identify a cell involved. We may need to isolate it, which is here by flow cytometry. You can isolate a specific uh, population by gating. You, we may need also to study different cell types that could be involved in this specific response. Also, you may need to know some cellular function, what the, what the cells uh, do. And also, uh, the interactions that constitute these responses. What the output might come uh, from these responses. So how can we, how flow cytometry can offer uh, us to help us to study that? For different cells, uh, we can, or tracking, for example, you can track cellular, uh, cell lineage. Say, for example, uh, uh, immature cells, following activation, it turns into mature cells, say dendritic cells. You, you can, by your knowledge of what the surface expression of that cell on uh, immature cells and dendritic cells, following activation, you will have changes in the surface uh, marker up to five, say for example, five co-stimulatory molecule. You stand them, you will be able to, to know uh, uh, if this is uh, mature cells or immature dendritic cells. Also, uh, the multi-parameters on different stain you can, you can, from the same sample stain, differences in T cell, T cell, B cell, uh, natural killer cell, whatever you are interested uh, to see. Uh, also, you can check CD activation. Uh, activation, for example, early activation, if you stain your cells for uh, some new cells by CDs, 
cysteine. You can differentiate the, if this cell, how many kilos of CD69 could tell you if those cells are being activated or not, or by the uh, production of, uh, say, cytokines. Uh, adhesion molecules as well, say for example, ICON-1 or beta lectin or, or, or is, uh, is possible to stand on and then detect them. You can also check for migration and ability to respond to uh, stimuli and interact to other cells by checking the protein phosphorylation or uh, cell signaling pathways. So how can we do this? Uh, for cellular, for example, this is only I'm giving one example, cellular example, cellular intercommunication. You can use the surface uh, expression or binding of these self, cell surface molecules, for example, to, to check for interaction. Does the activation or the change in this immune response lead to an increase in the expression of that specific protein? or it leads to a phosphorylation of that protein. And that's what we, and what does it lead to also, you can check what we call them for cytokine, chemokine, or inflammatory mediators, and their receptors as well changes. Uh, and compare it, which we call them, the biological response modifier of the immune system. But how we can accomplish all of that is by the power of that flow cytometry you can, detect multi-parameters at the same time. So even as before I said, we have, you can do the maximum per one test per one tube is four. But that, say for example, if I did it, uh, activate, say, and fix, and I divide it, say, in uh, two or three tubes, I can even add up to eight or other different cells or proteins and um, instead of analyzing one tube, I analyze one, two, and three. Because uh, you will be, yes, having four parameters per each, but in the end, there's three tubes, that means you are analyzing 12 different. So for example, three different cells, uh, what each one of these cells produce, one of the three, which one has the highest expression or being used for that specific activation. Also, you have the immunoplasticity uh, of mixed cell population. Uh, you can detect even track one protein, but you want to check the level of expression uh, on different kind of cells. You can have that uh, in the same uh, reaction or test. So the same for receptors uh, or other cell uh, surface antigens. Say, for example, you harvest the cells, uh, you block the FC receptors, so you reduce not having any specific binding if you're on the body, of course, between each stage there is a wash. You stand and you just do your acquiring in vitro cytometry. And here is an example. Say, so for example, on uh, interleukin receptor 6, uh, you want to check the differential expression between two different cells. Here you have it in CD4 T cells, and here you have the CD. A T cells, and you can see that uh, CD4 uh, almost most of the cells is expressing, where it's part about what 30 to 40 30 percent say of CD8 expressing. So like that, you will have an idea about uh, uh, differential expression uh, in different of a specific receptor uh, in different cells. So this may. If you are planning uh, studying more on that, so you will know, for example, what choice of cell you wanna you wanna study. So like that, say for example, you have interleukin six binding and its its receptor. So for, say I choose the uh, interleukin uh, CD8 or uh, the CD4, and I wanna study uh, what what signaling pathway it goes through and uh, or what of um, gene expression might come out of that binding. So if you can have cytokine, transcription factors, all of, the, all of, all of these through at least three different Jeffstar pathway or AKT pathway or MAP kinase uh, pathway. So you, you, by this knowledge you can um, say track where 
that cell on that specific, this is just an example of interleukin okay, 6. Uh, but say, for example, you want to study di uh, in two different receptors but in the same cell, okay, not comparing uh, two, uh, one, one in different cells, but here we want to check the inter uh, two like receptor 1 and two like receptor 4 in, in uh, monocyte, which is CD4 tree. And from this test here, you can see that this this cell expresses both of them. So if, say, conventionally you did not identify or isolate CD14, and say without getting, you just check, we know that B cell also express the TLR4. So if you have expression here without identifying the cells, you are, that is CD14, so that means those kind of cells, it could be, for example, combination of CD19 and CD14. But by having the two parameters uh, of, of that specific cell, you can know that an isolate uh, that only these cells have the expression of, uh, of these two. Also, you can use these two uh, uh, knowledge by, say, if you activate the cell, will it lead to an increase or activation of uh, TLR1 or uh, TLR4? So, uh, for a specific stimuli, and you can track it in your subsequent experiment from here. Uh, it can also say receptor could be uh, an indicator for cell activation, specifically. Say, for example, uh, if you are a selling interleukin receptor beta 20, this is from uh, spelinocytes. And they have the cells uh, attached, uh, sorry, isolated by CD13 on, on the blade for activating them, for isolation. So uh, differential kind of activation could influence the level of expression bear receptors. So if they activate by interleukin 2 and 4, you got this level of expression from uh, interleukin 12 receptor. But if you add this whole cell with the leukin 12 and inhibiting interleukin 4 and add PMA, dextran, frontline air, like borosacrylic, see how much increase in the receptor expression uh, on that cells. So again, know what, uh, what type of activator you want to put in your cell and, uh, and and checking different, it can give uh, <coughs> for your like uh, specific or for what you want to uh, study basically. So technically, if it's better always if you are uh, standing uh, for a receptor to block is uh, the FC receptor. Uh, so here in B and D, you have in these two experiments they block the FC receptors. And uh, in the A and C, it's not blocked. So you can see uh, if, if you block it, you may have false uh, positive from the negative here coming into your positive, where you will have uh, well separation that actually most of the cells uh, uh, specifically bind to your, um, to your uh, antibody or to your receptor. So it's better in your experiment to block uh, the FC receptor before carrying. Now for intracellular staining, what can we do? I'm giving here only an example. Cytokine and it could also say work for most of the other like uh, chemokines uh, uh, or the other intracellular um, uh, uh, activators. You can you can use it actually to detect. Uh, different cytokines producing if you compare from whole blood or peripheral blood where you can also between different donors. So uh, so you can uh, say for example this one it has for interferon gamma and interleukin point four. Uh, you could have the statistic and then uh, check if uh, say, for example, uh, between different, uh, why we you activate those cells, how, how does that influence uh, this um, cytokine expression? Why is that? Because cytokines, uh, as we can see, 
in some whole way. Uh, some of them could have uh, autocrine and activate the stem cells, or some have paracrine and uh, activate the nearby, or autocrine and activate the really far cell. And uh, they do regulate the immune, uh, immune cells, and that's why it's better when you have flow cytometry to use the surface marker expression in addition to the intracellular um, staining of cytokine, you will know what specific cells that uh, produce that uh, cytokines upon your activation. So, the, for example, if we to detect uh, cytokine production by specific cell upon stimulation, here example, uh, you have CD8. And we, we checked uh, here the check of interleukin 2, 4, or interferon gamma. Uh, as you can see from here, we, it's a from difference from resting cell and activating cell, you indicate that it does produce interleukin 2 and interleukin, uh, sorry, and interferon gamma, but uh, no interleukin 4. So the use of multi Color stain for intracellular cytokine uh, is, 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 is protocol is very straightforward. For it, only you need to harvest the cells, you block the HC receptors, and you can stain the surface and again and this one is optional because some um, also this one you have to search for is some um, fixity or permeabilization may have uh, will influence the, the detection of the surface stain. So if that's the case, you need to stain first the surface marker, then fix your cells and permeabilize, and then do your intracellular uh, uh, cytokine. So before you do your experiment, it's better to check for if this surface, specific surface receptor will be affected by this fixative or this parallelized uh, buffer before you carry on. Otherwise, you will stand for the three color, you, in the end you will end up only with the cytokine and not having the cell surface uh, expressed, detected. So, uh, also you can directly uh, check and stand for cytokine from that block. Uh, and this is how it works. Following your uh, you, you rows of blocks, say for example, one of them activated, the other unactivated, you will need two controls. You need two controls. Uh, one of them is uh, to stand for isotype control for unstimulated and also for the stimulated. And the other you will add the uh, fluorescent dye in each. So like that, you will specifically be able to know by subtracting the activated from the non-activated to get your uh, response, the percentage of the cell's response or being activated. So here is the blood you collected, you lice right away the, the red blood cells and fix them. Here you wash and then permobilize the cells to make the cell more permeable and you wash and then you stain and then you acquire it. And here you can see as indicator for cell activation, you have CD69 positive and these cells produce interferon down. Uh, so uh, you can uh, do your measurement right away from blood, not necessarily even from uh, a brittle blood when you put uh, cells. Uh, another assay, you, you could have specific assays. Uh, specific assays, say for example, uh, cytotoxic cell analysis. Usually, uh, previously, they use ELISA spot, and on that, they activate the cells or reduce them, and you can see black dots, but you cannot tell those black dots or these uh, cytotoxics uh, or interferon gum producing say, are they actually natural color cell or even for grand dime or perforin, are they natural color cell or they are coming from the T cell, T helper one or they are coming from any NK T cells because the three can, produce, can, can have interferon gamma and also the three can uh, have grand dime and perforin. Uh, 
But upon your activation, which one of the three cells is being activated? You cannot tell from the elastic form. Uh, but you can tell, yes, there is cytotoxic disease, but uh, which cell you cannot uh, know. So that's why this BD company, they designed this protocol and they used uh, CD107A. 